Live on the ground from Galvanize, San Francisco. It's the Cube covering Amplify Women's Pitch Night. Now here's John Furrier. Hello, Ron. I'm John Furrier with the Cube on the ground here in San Francisco for Girls in Tech Amplify. Women's Entrepreneurship Pitch Competition. Our next guest is Stephanie Shu, who is the founder of uh, Admit C, Admit S E E. Welcome to the the Cube on the ground. You just gave your presentation. How Hi. did it go? First, tell us what it is, and then how, how did it go? Sure. Um, we are the first and largest searchable database of successful application files. So that includes grades, test scores, extracurriculars, essays, even the students' advice. And it's essentially a platform that allows a college applicant to connect with someone who's already in college, been through that process, um, and really is you know, a year or two ahead of them, but is similar. So you can be like a first generation student, connect with somebody else who's first generation, um, that kind of thing. So they get a seal for the, the, the data around schools and the people who got in. Mm -hmm. So the prospective college applicant can yes. kind of compare and contrast, is that how it works? Exactly, it's, uh, it's like essentially seeing what a successful example of an application file looks like. A lot of them get inspiration from essays. Uh, Stanford, for example, um, they ask, uh, yeah. write a letter to your roommate every single year as their supplemental essay. And so on our site, you can actually see hundreds of students who responded to that particular question and kind of suss out for yourself uh, how you want to address that question. And so what kind of um, stage is the product in? Is it build, is it prototype? What's the status? Um, we've launched, uh, we have users, we have customers, people who are paying for it. Um, wow. and so really just trying to grow at this how point. How many uh, users is it uh, targeted for individuals? Is it targeted schools or just? Um, it's direct to consumers, so it's individuals, parents. Um, we have some schools that have uh, free access. We've provided them with free mm -hmm. access, especially for schools that are in sort of low income um, areas. Uh, that's definitely something that we feel really strongly about. Which so I'll ask you a hard question, if I'm a judge here. <laughs> so what's the core action that you like to see people use? Because you think Snapchat, people say snaps. Mm. Pinterest, people pin. There's always a core action that apps have or platforms. Is there one for you? Is it, is it reading applications? Is it uh, outreaching to students? What would you like to see as the core action for the application? I think to start with, uh, we call it unlocking a profile. Um, so it's, uh, a profile is locked, you get a preview of it to see whether or not it's something you're interested in and then you can unlock to a read. A profile of a person who's been through. Yes. Of like a if I want to go to Stanford, what's it take to get it? What's the algorithm for Stanford? That's what people want to know, right? Right, um, and so it's unlocking a profile, and I think beyond that, the next step is then to ask a question of that student, because ultimately, we're trying to build this community of students who are helping other students, um, and really giving college students actually a chance to get paid for paying it forward, that's what we call it. So what's the business case, and where'd you get the idea from? Um, we started, I started this uh, company as a grad student, so it was something that was very top of mind for me. Um, when I applied to grad school, I thought it was something that uh, I could essentially replicate how I applied to college with grad school, and it was not at all that similar. And, um, and it was, you know, the question was why is there not an existing database of successful application files, especially of specific essays that I want to write about? Like I took some time off from, uh, from college undergrad, and when I applied to grad school, I had to explain uh, why I interrupt, interrupted my studies. And so that was an essay I've never seen before. I had to write an essay about that, and it was very personal. And so for some, it might be considered kind of like a controversial topic to write about. Um, and it would have been really great to see how somebody else had dealt with that topic. So it's not so much you're cutting and pasting essays, you just get some discovery around things that have worked for others that you can get accelerated on the content side for the application. Sounds like that was what people kind of think about. Yeah, I think a lot of students want to write about things that are very personal to them, but they don't know how to address it. So, you know, the death of a parent, for example, um, they don't want it to come across as a sob story. And it's like, how has somebody else really talked about this in a compelling way? Or for international students, a lot of them think, I'm going to write about, you know, my ethnic background. Um, and they, 
don't really think about how, as an international yeah. student, almost every person is writing about that. So how do you stand out? Yeah. Well, I'm a fellow entrepreneur, so I love the idea. I'm Thank thinking you. instantly that um, there could be a social network component. Absolutely. I mean, I could want to get some help on my grades or maybe get someone to augment my reality, if you will. Um, Absolutely. Interesting dynamic there, thoughts? On yeah, um, so we've started with the college application process as sort of the first entry point as a student, when you make that uh, decision about where to go to college, that's really your first, I think, decision you're making as kind of an independent young adult, where you want to spend the next four years of your life. And sometimes so, they're not even sure. Right, exactly. Um, and you don't have anyone to turn to, especially if no one you know out has of touch. applied. Well, <laughs> there's that. So some people who even turn to experts, the expert tells them, you know, I think you should apply to these colleges based on your personality. But um, more and more, we see students are crowdsourcing, yeah. um, you know, peer That's the uh, real trend. insights, right? The real trend is, is that the people that are the current so-called experts are a short supply and they usually have some biases coming in. Mm -hmm. So you're increasing the data available for the consumer, your customer. Yeah, and it's more relevant to the student because you know, you're know you connecting and talking to people who are have the same stats as you, similar backgrounds, and they've been through the process before. So what are some of the feedback you've heard? Obviously, what did the judges say? Um, how many people, are, where are you guys located? How many people are working in the company? Sure, uh, Do you have funding so far? Are you looking for funding? Give us, the, give us the story. Yeah, we're based in San Francisco. Um, we're a team of six people right now. We raised a seed round last year. Um, and, I mean, aren't you always fundraising? <laughs> That's the thing, right? <laughs> so, um, thinking about uh, raising more money right now. Um, and business milestones, well. can you share some data around uptake, uh, success? Yeah, uh, we have um, over 200,000 registered users right now. It's a pretty open site, so you don't necessarily have to register um, in order to use the site. Um, but sort of our next stage is to be on the application process to really help students uh, mentor each other through post-acceptance, making that decision about where to attend school after you've been accepted. And we have all these data sets around it, so really using that to our advantage. Do you see a pattern? Is it one, a one and done kind of scenario? Or what keeps the longevity or stickiness of the site? Because you think, it's kind of like I watched you know, NCAA March Madness and it's over and I don't load the app anymore. I get into college, <laughs> am I done? Or how do you keep that, that uh, flywheel going of engagement? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I would say the sort of biggest draw to what we're doing that's different from other people is we are really focused on that peer-to-peer -peer aspect, um, on building that community. And uh, that can be applied not just to college applications, but as I said, to post-acceptance, choosing a major, uh, choosing internships, grad school, and even if you really extrapolate it to finding your first job, right? Like really connecting with someone who's similar to you, um, recent alums, that's definitely sort of the life uh, cycle that we want to go through. So Sorry. what are you looking for for funding now? If you had the person watching, seeing this video, what would you be asking for for funding? Like a number? Yeah. Five um, million, 10 million, 20 million. How much capital <laughs> do you need to go to the next level? Um, so we're trying to figure out whether or not we want to raise uh, a series A, but I think in the interim, um, I'd like to raise uh, another 500K. Um, we have a number of different marketing initiatives um, we've really identified. Um, there are a ton of international markets out there that we haven't really tapped into. Um, international uh, students are growing at a rate of, you know, 25% year over year actually enrolled in the U.S. and so. What's your growth going to be for next year? You are uh, 200,000 registered users now. Where do you want to be in a year? Where do you uh, think you'll be in a year? I think we'll be, uh, we'll be at a million in a year. All right, awesome opportunity. Thanks for sharing here on theCUBE, on the ground. Stephanie Hsu, founder of uh, Admit C, which is a great, kind of interesting opportunity around taking the college application process and not making it so hard and so painful, bringing more data. Thanks for sharing. Thank you so much. I'm John Furrier, watching theCUBE on the ground here in San Francisco. Thanks for watching.